All right, welcome everyone. I just broke and destroyed this phone. This is an old, I believe, 1986 ITT telephone, push button, wall hanging telephone. And I just broke it because it doesn't work. So I've been testing some telephones out here. I like to make videos of the ringers for eBay buyers and just because I think it's kind of cool, we're moving away from this type of telephone. So, I, uh, I broke it. I had to break the, well you can't really see that can you? I'm still getting used to videos, I'm, I'm probably not ever going to be very good at them, but uh, there's the cover, the outside plastic skin or housing, whatever you might want to call it, that I went ahead and brute force broke off of it. I couldn't figure out for the life of me, how would you dismantle this phone to replace a part? Well, it turns out the spot where the numbers go, this could be a very bad idea. The spot where the numbers go, let's try to zoom in. Let's try to hold it up and maybe zoom in on it. See that? That was covered by a paper number I since threw away and uh, don't know where it's at. Not an expert at tripods either. This will come together someday maybe. So it turns out this little plastic piece covering the number just, just pops out. And then you have access to these two screws. So I'm going to take these screws out and that whole plastic piece likely would just lift right off. That piece was broken so I wasn't concerned about it. I'm going to see if I can harvest any parts out of this thing or uh, just just give a look to it to see if it's uh, see how cool it is so we need a screwdriver uh, we need a screwdriver to take this apart ordinarily I'd like to have all my tools ready to go but I decided this spur of the moment to take this apart. I'm disassembling it. Uh, we'll see if this one will work. Probably too big. No, it might work. These are flathead screws. Which, if you're not familiar, are not used all that often anymore. Radiator clamps a lot of times will have flatheads. And not much else. If you're using a flathead screw, it doesn't need to be tightened down very well. So there it is. And the screws just stay right in that, right in that piece of plastic. And you didn't see any of that. You saw none of that. Okay. But right there, the screws stay in the piece of plastic. We'll try to adjust it so. The screws stay in this piece of plastic. Alright. Then these are the guts of the foam. See if we can pan up for you a little bit. There's the push button dialer. I believe you can see the bell back there. That brass item. That's the bell ringer. And then there's a couple other. I don't know if I can show you this or not. Mechanisms. When you put the phone down on the hook. That stops the connection and also the push button. See, I was not able to test this phone, so I have no idea if this phone works or what part was bad on it. I heard something shaking around, so okay, and then we can really start to dismantle it. I don't know if you can see that. Nope, can't see anything. I apologize, this is a horrible workstation. 
to be taking a video. But I really just don't care. This is more for me than it is for you. I'd like to look at this in the future. And remember that time I was messing around with this ITT Vintage 1986 hanging wall telephone beige made in Corneth, Mississippi. Tag, hashtag, whatever. Okay, so now we can remove this jack and we could test that part and see if it's bad. And it just slides right in there. So now you can see how this phone was put together. I'm going to take a closer look. And I wouldn't know what any of these wires were for. Now my grandfather used to do this work. So he could tell me. He could tell me what was wrong with this phone, I believe. Okay. When I push the volume button up, I can see the internal mechanism actually moving. And then there's two screws on the side that let loose the number pad. So that you can replace that. But I was not getting a dial tone. So... Chances are this number pad is okay. And I've sold a number pad before. Oh, screws come right out of it. And it's just these two metal brackets on the side. Again, you've got your, your straight slotted screws. Just a regular screw, not a Phillips. Straight head. Now I've taken the screws out and the thing's in there okay. But you can basically just pop it out. Let's see if you can see that. Did you see that? You might be zoomed in a little bit too much. See, that's the number pad here. See? So it's got two screws in there holding it in place, and then the wires run to ah, the rest of the components. So, hmm. See, the, the unfortunate part is a working phone is anywhere between seven to a hundred and seventy dollars. So I have no idea. Um, I, I feel like the bell is in good shape. It didn't get damaged from falling or anything like that. But how much would somebody be willing to pay for that bell? Probably nothing. Like I really just don't know. The other internal mechanisms look okay. But, I mean, just who, however many people are looking for these phones, when you can buy a phone like this, you can just buy this phone in good used condition for $15. Who's going to want to try to replace that keypad when it's such a disposable society and nobody knows what they're doing alright so this phone also came with this headset handset I suppose handset well you guys can't see anything this is turned into a horrible video we'll see who even watches it and so the handset I'm going to I'm gonna hold on to I might sell that later I might post it up when I've got some extra time I'll just keep this around as a spare part. Uh, first, I do have to test this, though. That would be a good idea. That would be a good idea. So to test that, we just take this thing, even though it's really cool, even though it's vintage, and we throw it in the garbage, because nobody wants to pay for these parts. And you just save yourself a bunch of headaches. Now, this phone works. I know this phone works. We're going to take our phone cord. Uh, we're going to move around the extensive mess that is my workstation. We're going to unplug this phone's handset. 
momentarily. That'll still be included in, in the sale. If you're interested in this AT&T CL2939 model, and I also have a, a handset for that model. Okay, you got to be smarter than the phone. The cord only goes in one way. And the light is really giving me some problems right now. Okay. So there's the handset. It's plugged into the wall. Okay. So that handset is broken. And perhaps I should have tried a different handset on that phone because I just destroyed possibly a working phone. Okay, the phone's got no dial tone and I've heard it work. There's the dial tone. See, sometimes you gotta try things more than once. Just make sure. And I'm doing all this for maybe five dollars. The handset works. So I did all that work for five bucks. Maybe. If someone's willing to pay me for it. But this is just some of the things I do on a daily basis that uh, may or may not make me money. Sometimes I get lucky and make 50 bucks off of a phone like this. And a lot of times I'm making 20 or 10 bucks on a phone. They're not the cheapest things to buy sometimes. But for, for the most part, older phones like this ITT model sell within a month. I don't know about these new phones. This is the first batch I've got, but they're uh, they're much better phones as far as office phone systems and things like that go. So we'll see exactly how long it takes for these to sell. I've got two of these. What are they? CL2939. 2939. So I'll have a video posting the ring on that. And I don't know much else about them, so hopefully someone does. They can help me out. This one over here has a a Plantronics. This one here is, is really cool. It's got a Plantronics hookup for a headset, perhaps. And then if you want to put somebody on hold, pop. And it, and it feels like this is a motor. I don't know if you could hear that, but it feels like it's supposed to be motorized. I'll see if I can't take a look at that. Both of these systems, I believe, come with a uh, battery backup. So that's the first time I've seen that on a phone in, in a while. Alright, thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. And uh, join us again for another episode of Look at This Telephone.